and please join me in welcoming Liz Hernandez and everyone else here for the for the BFA Conversations Part One of 2023. Yay! Thank you. Yeah. I'm just gonna try to move this. Yes, you're fine. All right. Um, my name is uh, Yaskin Cuentas Parientos, um, and this is my BFA presentation. I'm going to be graduating in like a month, and I'm currently I currently just moved my studio to Oakland, um, but I was painting in San Francisco for like the past year and a half, um, and painting like at home whenever like I go anywhere. Um, and I was born here in the Bay Area, actually, um, but my parents moved pretty quickly. Um, and I kind of grew up in the Sierra Nevada foothills. Um, and I think that had like a large effect on kind of like who I am uh, today. And I think that, I think that like my journey with art kind of began um, with my parents and kind of like my mom wanting to keep us away, me and my brother away from like video games. And um, kind of just like wanting to keep us like entertained or like active with something uh, physical. And my dad was always, um, he was always like making something uh, when he could. And he used to make little like uh, blueprints um, for like koi ponds um, when he used to make those. but. I think um, my story at CCA at least began with architecture. Um, and before I came to CCA, that was kind of like where I thought like my journey was heading um, and from like uh, two Mexican parents. I, I felt like uh, that was kind of like the next step in my journey, um, like a higher education, like happy with how I was drawing um, and I was really enjoying drawing architecture. So it only seemed to make sense to pursue a career like that. Um, but I wasn't really happy in architecture and a lot of it seemed to be based in computers. Um, and I still wanted to draw. So I kind of switched over COVID. Um, and I kind of had this period where I was in painting but I was still kind of like hanging out with my friends and kind of like in our own world. Um, and I was like really started getting attached to like the local history um, of where I grew up a lot with like the gold rush and a lot of like the mines around the area. Um, and I just kind of had like a moment to really like appreciate where I came from um, before I came back to school. Um, but I kind of like hit the ground running when I came back to school and I got my first studio. And I was really getting absorbed by a lot of artists that no idea about like uh, Gonzalo Fonseca was I think like the first person I was really drawn to. Um, not only his work, which had a lot of architectural elements and um, just like weird spaces where you could find wander, your eyes wander, um, but he also and went to art and I found that pretty funny when I uh, discovered him like the summer before I came back to CCA. Um, and then I, when I came to CCA, I started going to all these galleries um, and just really exposing myself to art, found a lot of uh, characters in history that I wasn't aware of, um, which are really making a comeback now um, and this artist Ruminio Svaro really opened me up to a lot of different um, artists kind of like that were working in Mexico and also Mexican artists. Um, and I kind of had a new perspective of art and that's where I kind of started um, drawing a little bit more and pushing what I knew about drawing and architecture and worlds I wanted to make. Um, so I started really like pushing myself in this direction um, but I knew I was also in painting and I wanted to see how that could be like a challenge to apply something to. 
and a new paint is a totally different exploration and it's much more emotional and tied to memory. Um, and it seemed just like, it just seemed like a perfect way to merge everything I knew together. And um, I started like kind of like simplifying and like deconstructing some designs that, um, that I was interested in and I was already making. And everything was very structured, but I wanted to make things a little bit more instinctively and loose about kind of my own background coming from this like Sierra Nevada didn't really have that many, um, I, I wasn't really like exposed to like Mexican culture back there. And I, I really felt like I was in a bubble. Um, but I, every time I go back there, I still have this admiration for my friends and especially like the land in that area. Um, and all the interests that I was starting to accumulate in experiences in San Francisco, I thought I was in this kind of like place of friction. Um, and I started kind of like speaking from that area um, in this painting called kind of speaking to those like experiences of finding these abandoned gold mines and kind of how like they opened just my like, my awareness to what's around me and what's even like beneath me. Um, I was really starting to find a sense of belonging with kind of where my name comes from. Cause it like, it really affected like the way I navigated throughout the world. Like every time I introduce myself, it's like, I have to spell it out or sound it out or something like this. And I, all I knew was that it was a Mayan name. Um, and that was about as much as I knew until I came back to school. And I, when I switched to painting, I was like, so much time on my hands. And it kind of like as an opportunity to help myself too. And the more I researched um, like cosmology and like the structures of the world and kind of, um, I don't know, like it, it just removed me in the, in a way that like finding those like abandoned caves, like kind of removed me from like the pandemic and leaving architecture and risking everything, um, and just applying myself to making something. Um, I wanted to like recreate some of these, these references to like ancient and archaic and glyphs but also like heard it to be as much about like me and who I am now and my own upbringing I, I'm, I don't feel like comfortable like calling myself who I am today um, it was my first uh, language but I just don't think like my own relationship to it now um, I don't know, it's just confusing. And these these paintings kind of brought me and I started using some of these like smaller like figures. I would like replace them with something later, but I started like filling these environments that I made with kind of like just like something to step into the world and give like a viewer an opportunity to like step inside this like in between area between um I don't know just like when like just coming from like different places and not really like fitting into something and you kind of want to have something to call your own and I was like still pushing it through drawing and yes skiing yeah you have like a you have like a minute okay thank you um and these are, this is a painting I made last year. The moon whispered to me tonight. And it kind of like, 
showed like where I was kind of moving towards. I felt like I was already like moving towards a new direction. And I think um, as I was like referencing um, some of these like Mesoamerican um, influences, I started feeling like uncomfortable. I, I wasn't sure if I was like, really want to be like claiming something like this, even though I have like this name that I carry with me. Um, I think this painting um, really addresses this, uh, like my own level of understanding of my like ancestors and where I come from. It feels like I'm trying to latch onto something and find like a sense of belonging with it, but sometimes it feels like I'm making um, like these, like these, like these surface level, um, like relations to things that I'm try like trying to unite together. Um, and it's just like something that I, something that I'm like experiencing now. Um, and my most recent painting, like Gold Digger, um, addresses this a little bit more. And just kind of like sets me up in like this new direction where like, I don't know, like moving forward, um, there's a lot of like questions that I have. Um, and I think that painting will continue to lead me like that is making me kind of like ask questions about like my family, but also kind of about the world and see like what what does it really like mean to to come from somewhere or or what does it mean to like belong in in different places? I don't know. Yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you, Yaski. I think it's my turn. You can uns yeah, you can. And okay. yes, can you can unshare your screen screen now? Stop, stop sharing. Yeah. Awesome. Hi. Um, Hello. I have lots of thoughts about this presentation. Um, first, I just want to say that I feel like I can relate to you a lot. I always tell people that. Well, people get surprised when I tell them that I went to school for industrial design. And I feel like you kind of sharing a little bit about that pressure to go to school for like architecture. I It just resonated with me a lot. Um, surprisingly, I think that maybe that initial um, kind of interest in architecture really translates to your work now. Like I still see that it has like, you're interested, um, let me just read my notes too. I see that you are interested in space and even the the um, artists that you mentioned that inspire you, they all have this um, uh, interest in like how space is um, kind of, um, how do you say it? Arranged, um, especially with like Remedios Barro, she starts kind of like using space in this more surreal way that I think it actually, I see that influence more in your uh, later works. Um, I was very surprised to see your drawings. I've seen your work, the, the softer kind of paintings, but I've never seen your earlier works with, um, I think, is it ink? Like ballpoint or some ink? And it's so interesting. Um, I, I don't know how much time it's been between those um, kind of two bodies of work, but I just see a huge growth. Like I'm a little shocked. Like the growth that I see there, it's just really um, impressive. And I think you probably just found a space where you feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, I just find like those pieces are so um, confident. They're just like, 
confident. Like I don't see any kind of like tightness, any maybe areas where you feel a little like too tight, like in some of the earlier drawings, but they're just very confident and introspective. And the color is also just the color palette is um, very mature. Um, and also just like hearing you speak about those um, questions that you're asking yourself about who am I? I have this name that has a lot of history. Is this history really mine? Um, I feel like you're asking the right questions and it is actually really difficult for an artist to be that uh, introspective and inquisitive, especially when you're like younger and still learning, but you're asking yourself those right questions. And I think that you're addressing them in a very interesting, very successful way, in my opinion. Um, so I would just encourage you to continue with your um, interest that it's like learning about um, Mesoamerican um, just um, cultures, um, but also don't ignore your um, interest in space. I feel like the way that I wrote down, like when I was looking at your um, pieces were just these, um, these landscapes that are like introspective, they're about your inner workings kind of, but they're clearly um, at the same time influenced by your, where you grew up, you know, like you have an admiration for the land and you mentioned that. And I think that I see it in these um, landscapes as well. So I, I can see how you're connecting all your interests the ancient that maybe feels a little bit removed from you that you're still trying to kind of find a way to engage with, the the, the reality that you live, which is the the landscapes of the um, Sierra Nevada, is that what you say? Sorry, um, and but also this like place that doesn't exist, which is kind of where you feel like that in betweenness, um, and I think that it, it, you're just doing such a good job doing that, and you are just starting with this body of work. And I can't wait to see how that translates to um, maybe bigger scale works. I feel like sculpture would be amazing too. Um, yeah, just, I'm, I'm very impressed. It, it is a very incredible, um, timeless, um, very introspective and interesting body of work. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. I feel like I just talked a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we have to move on. I think we have to move on to the um, the next person. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Rose, I'm gonna be, um, I'm the annoying timekeeper just so we're on, just so we no keep. No worries. Uh, yeah. Um, Rose, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Um, Hi, Rose. I'm Rose. Um, I grew up in Daly City. Um, I moved in Napa for a little bit of my life, um, but I moved back. So let me just share. I am a painting drawing major. Um, and you all can see. Looks good. Okay. Um, so my, sorry, uh, my work revolves around my mental health and the way I come to understand and process my emotions. The more I continued to paint, um, I was more focused on my feelings, either past, present, or future. I wanted to become more aware of my anxiety and depression and understand the situations that led up to it. Um, looking back on the traumatic events that have happened in my life, um, they've ex inspired me to keep making art and have also been a way for me to cope. I started working on a series of self-portraits with limited facial features because I grew up in a household where expressing intense emotion became unsafe um, and because I've always been forced to keep neutral expressions. Um, I wanted to try creating compositions that help me communicate hopelessness, loss, loneliness, hopefulness, suffering in silence, anxiety, and resilience. And being able to create and storytell through painting and art, I began to do a lot of self-reflection within myself, 
I allowed myself at times not to be, not only to be vulnerable in my art, but also try to be vulnerable, vulnerable with people. Um, and some of my inspirations mostly come from tarot cards and um, spirituality, witchcraft, the occult. Um, and for tarot, it inspires me because I like the sim symbolism within um, in the cards, within the art, and the meaning behind some of the cards. And for this artist, um, Lua Li Rong, um, I admire the gracefulness, femininity of her sculptures. And it's something I guess I try to remind myself about being graceful and being open to femininity. And for this one, Melissa Miller, um, I'm mostly drawn to the color, the use of color um, and the brush strokes within her work. And so my first piece, um, this is one of my first self portraits. Um, and it's about looking back on moving into the city um, versus when I used to live in Napa. Um, Napa was much more calm and quiet and the people there were much more friendly and the city was way too loud for me and the people weren't as nice. And I felt that I wasn't able to go out compared to in Napa, I was always outside, playing outside, talking to people. Um, and in the city, I was stuck inside all the time because it was too dangerous and for a kid who's going out on their own. Um, and this one's also, this one's about when I used to stargaze with my dad in Napa when the stars were much more viewable. Um, and after his death, I spent a lot of time shutting out memories that I had with him because of how much it hurt. Um, but now it's something that I choose to remember. And that's why I made this painting of myself looking at the stars alone, but also remembering him. Um, and this self-portrait I made when I was having difficulty expressing my feelings. Um, I suffered in silence a lot and the cut throat leaking blood is meant to represent my feelings coming out in unhealthy ways while the eyes and the heart represents um, people who have hurt me. Um, this one is about change within myself, um, and that I'm constantly changing, that I'll never be the same person who I was when I felt truly happy. And this was a way for me to honor, um, my past self and remember that who I was and remembering who I was and who I'll never be be again. Um, and the flowers I painted are hyacinths, daisies, dahlias, and on the heart, forget-me-nots. And the red line going down her body is a lifeline that still connects us. Um, for this one, this one was a time where I tried to practice a lot more self-care. Um, I grew up in a Filipino household as the oldest daughter, and that meant I had a lot of responsibilities. Um, it taught me to put others before my own needs, and it's something that I'm trying to unlearn. Uh, 
Um, I named this one the failure um, because I wouldn't be who I am without my failures. Um, before I came to CCA, I was attending CCSF. Uh, I was actually studying to be a marine biologist, um, but I couldn't get past chemistry and math. Um, I had gotten a lot of academic probations at that time, but when I changed my major to studio arts, I actually ended up getting on the dean's list. And that's when I decided to actually take art more seriously. Um, this one is a lot more inspired by tarot, mostly inspired by um, the Fool card, which is about freedom, adventure, new beginnings, innocence, etc. cetera. Um, and it's how I felt when I looked back when I was attending CCSF and how different things are uh, now compared to then and how I never really expected to be where I am now, but also still looking forward on other opportunities that are out there for me. Rose, mm -hmm. you, have two, you have two more minutes. Okay. Um, I made this one during one of my anxiety spirals. Um, it was before the fall 2022 semester. And I was really nervous about going to in-person classes and meeting new people um, and just being around people in general. And the self-portrait is meant to symbolize my own inner turmoil. And the background is meant to be the reality of what's actually going on. Um, and this one was part of an assignment called Obstructions, where we came up with two challenges for ourselves. And mine was abstraction and a limited color palette. Um, and while making this, I was in another class called Death by Death, and we were talking about afterlife. And that's something I kept in mind while creating this. Um, and this is something I'm currently working on. Um, it's called Please Be Perfect, mostly because of um, the memory of when I used to perform hula. Um, the teachers put a lot of pressure on us as kids and rehearsals were always intense and there was always yelling going on. And it taught me that if I didn't do something perfectly, I would be met with disappointment or yelling. Um, and it's something, and I carried that pressure of perfection with me everywhere. Um, and it's still something I'm trying to unlearn. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, a lot of really vulnerable moments for you, I'm seeing. Um, so thank you for, for sharing with all of us. I made some notes just um, looking at the works that you share with us. And I think one element that I see a lot in all of them is that you are trying to make the invisible, the things that you've been kind of asked either explicitly or just like you being um, an old, oldest daughter, which I relate to, this like feeling of putting everyone else before of you, uh, of keeping quiet, of just not voicing out how you really feel. I think that you are making all those feelings visible. Um, of course, through using lots of um, very rich symbolism that I can, I can see the, uh, your, influences have really like inspired um, these portraits too. And to me, it just seems like you find um, the, the works as an opportunity for you to 
process these feelings to kind of make sense of your inner uh, workings. And I think it's, you did a really amazing job just being able to capture that in these works. Um, the use of color is super interesting too. I think you shared an artist, I made note of their name, but um, it was very colorful, but you still feel there's like some, like it is colorful, but it's not happy. It is more introspective. Um, I thought that was very interesting too. And um, yeah, just, I, I really enjoy the uh, the way that you've been able to capture these really difficult, at times violent um, feelings and just the way that you capture them in, in your in your paintings. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, not sure if there's any time for questions, but um, yeah. I don't have any questions. Okay. Next students can start now. Uh, is the next student Asase? Yes, Asase. Asase Sinafru. Hi. Hi, Asase. Hey, hey. Um, okay. So. Mm. Okay. All right. So, so uh, uh, my name is uh, Osade Sinefru. Um, I'm a senior painting and drawing student. Um, I was born in Berkeley, California, but uh, I'm currently based in Richmond. Um, I live in in the Bay Area, but I was primarily raised in uh, Central Valley in Fres Fresno and Madera Ranchos. And um, for me, like some of the, um, I guess my early like development or introduction to art would be by way of uh, my father. He's an artist as well. And um, so as a kid, I, I would do art and things like that. And even after moving away, um, I continued to do art which is what you see me doing here while I was uh, living out in, in Fresno. Um, yeah. There's some bizarre work here. Hold on one second. Um, okay, there it is. Okay, so for my uh, interests, um, so overall, like now, a lot of my artwork is, uh, you know, inspired by different family stories and things like that. But coming up, like in terms of my artistic process, uh, I remember and just like, like working on like my skills and things. I was like very inspired by sports, and so like things like football and and um, lots of other like historical uh facts or, or different moments in history, which is why I put the the photo uh, here down in the corner of just uh, some of my interests, you know, coming up and things like that. Um, so um, going on to uh, my, my first piece, again, you know, um, a lot of my work, uh, I would say I'm trying to, I'm using like ancestry as a solution to like trying to navigate like through my own personal life. And so a lot of the time while creating most of my abstract work um, and work in general, like I'm just thinking about like other moments, like like within my, my family history, um, like how it relates to me. Often, like, I remember coming up, or not coming up, but um, I remember, you know, like, my father telling me of how, like, 
I remind him a lot of his grandpa and, or his uh, father and things like that. And so, like, I just, like, really enjoy that. And I try to, like, show the other side of it in my artwork. So, like, here, um, I would say it's uh, I'm showing my appreciation for that and, like, things of, uh, like, aged, like, certain objects that are, like, aged and things like that. Um, I grew up around a lot of, like, like African sculptures and things like that. So with this piece here, um, it's called Excavation. And the reason why I called it that is because there's actually uh, various stages to the piece in which I uh, I like would create a new face or create it in a different color, oh my bad. And, um, but I would then intentionally paint over it and that was uh, mirrored after just looking at a lot of different uh, sculptures. Like I know I've seen po um, photos in the past of like different rituals, like in Africa, where there'll be like this huge mound or sculpture with all this wax, but it's just like from years and years, which is being used over and over again, almost to a point where like the object, the sculpture in that very moment creates like a new context and holds like a certain amount of sacredness. And that's what I want to be able to do uh, uh, with my work so that's what I did here and um, um this piece specifically here um it's one of my uh, the main ones I feel confident in primarily because most of my work is um you know it's not planned out I just like kind of do it you know in within the moment and like all of my interest and you know like uh past ideas like I just see where it takes me but with this one I wanted to be extremely like intentful in terms of what I was doing so like the the area that the figure which actually is um it's supposed to be like a somewhat of a, a rendering of me but um the area is um, a doorway within my house and you know doorways for me I see as like um like a, a portal it's almost it's very like animated and cartoon like but um that's that's how I see uh doorways and um, I'll get more into that as I go into like the other parts of uh, the presentation. Um, but yeah, really, this um, this piece is, you know, I'm I'm looking at this wall at least two like uh, ancestral uh, figures, and uh, like for guidance, you know, to like you know guide me through life and just figure out how to navigate. So um, this is one of my uh, favorite uh, pieces from uh, my, my senior year here. Yeah. So um, this one's called Before Acquiring Patina. And this one, again, is just about like feeling like it, uh, just that I, I don't, there's still like a lot that I don't know. Um, again, I said I was like, I was raised in Fresno, California, and I got to moving to that area. It was, um, there was like a lot of like chaos and calamity at the time, like going on between mother and father. So, you know, uh, moving from the Bay Area to uh, Fresno, it was kind of like a, I don't know, not a getaway, but it's like we're almost kind of escaping, you know, for me, you know, uh, it wasn't all that exciting, you know, Fresno. Uh, it's extremely hot. It's it's boring. There's nothing to do. Um, also, to not not only that, but um, you know, growing up, I was raised in a very like Afrocentric household. So when I moved out to Fresno, I was placed and I went to school amongst uh, very like conservative, like white people. Some you know even like blatantly racist. And um, for me, it was just like a huge contrast and culture shock. And um. I just it would just be so weird uh to me to be in those spaces. So um when I, I say like before acquiring the patina, um for those of you of you that don't know like a patina, it's almost kind of like when um it's almost like a sort of a hue or mark that kind of comes over time like amongst like a certain object you know, after like aging. So for example, like the Statue of Liberty of how it's green, that technically is a patina just from like years and years of like, you know, it gaining too much oxygen. And so for me, how I'm using it here is basically basically saying, um, 
they're really talking about, I guess, like, like innocence, you know, the pink area. It's uh, it's almost like a wound, but at the same time, it could almost be like a or in like going into uh, something new before, like, uh, you know, gaining that knowledge or experience that I need to navigate more wisely throughout life. And so, um, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say here. So here, um, this is a portrait that I did back during COVID during the summer. Um, I, you know, most of my work is all abstract and I, I really want to get deep into like doing representational work and uh, really like learning about the human form and being able to render it extremely well. Um, and so that's what I, I was practicing here all the while, of course, you know, um, uh, going back to, um, you know, a basic form of paying homage, you know, painting a, a photo of my dad. Um, and so I was very, um, like, proud of myself in terms of, like, I was able to, like, render, um, you know, the photo of my, my dad. Um, yeah. So this next piece here, this is uh, this is based on a, it's actually an unfinished series. But what I did is I created these thumbnail, these abstract thumbnail sketches, um, um, of different like door paths within my own like personal home, and um, uh, just to speak more on on like coming into like a new beginning, and um. When I think about it, how you know a lot of it is about uh, going from like a point in my life of feeling like a what is it um, unstable to going to a point of stability. You know, when I was young, I moved around a lot, and um, I felt like I had just like a lot of different uh, things going on that I didn't understand. And to me, they seemed like very like contrasting, um, like ways of being you know so like like for example you know um not only was i in like these conservative areas but also my um like personally like my, my step-grandfather like he's he's white he's caucasian and um there were just like there's just certain things like i would go in and, and do with him and i would be a part of but all the while it was like it was very uh awkward you know you know being from like an Afrocentric background and then like all of a sudden you know I'm in a you know I'm like doing these other things or I'm listening to a different kind of of music that's like completely in contrast with everything that I've learned at home but now since that the place in which I came from is no longer you know where I rest my head you know and um it's always my home but it's like it's a uh, it's just was a complete like shock for me so that's why I, I find uh it very important you know for me to do these uh these uh doorways because it's about like stepping into uh new beginnings and uh really like glorifying that like the good and the bad you know um so yeah Uh, this piece here uh, is called Lean on Me. Uh, it's really um, like an abstract spinoff of the corner of uh, of the portrait that I did of my dad. And um, it was, uh, they were like these experimentation pieces that I, I've continued to do like these five minutes. Well, this one wasn't five, five didn't take five minutes. It took a bit longer, um, but Really, I just wanted to find a way, uh, in an abstract way, of course, because that's mainly what, what I do most of the time, um, to um, like really, like, just create, you know, just be in my own way of uh, creativity. You know, one of the things that I, I think about in terms of uh, like my process over the like past four years and what I'm starting to see now is like how. Like I'm starting to like write stuff down 
um, and really like try to be more uh, thoughtful like with my work and uh, what I wanted to do. Because again, you know, a lot of it is all uh, just like within the, the moment, you know, out of just, just pure joy of uh, wanting to um, create. And so that's, um, that's where this uh, five minute series uh, comes in. And so, um, yeah, let's, let's sit on. So I'd say you have um, one more minute. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, all right. So uh, this piece here is called Geographical Portrait. Um, it intentionally, originally, I had uh, intended to do like a, like a classical, like just a regular rendering, a painting, a portrait of my my uh, mom. Um, however, over time, I had messed up on one side of it and I restarted on the other. And um, I wish I had a photo of it because it was in a, a, a show um, this past summer where I was able to show it on a glass window where people were able to see both sides of it. But this side right here specifically, um, I called it geographical portrait um, based upon um, based upon like the origin of like, where my mom comes from and uh, really like trying to show uh, yeah like where she comes from in like in a in a different type of way of course uh, a lot of my work um, I feel like I'm still like growing like skill wise in in terms of how I, I do my art so a lot of this was like experimenting with trying to see how much depth I can get within the piece and um after that when looking at it I was like oh it almost kind of reminded me of um specifically like like the edges of her shawl and things like that of like when you look at like a map instead of a textbook and like you see like all the different like green mountains and hills um and so that's where I got the um that's why I use the word geographical portrait, you know, um, you know, it's basically just talking about, you know, who she is and uh, where she's from and the importance of like knowing where you're from and always having like a, a home uh, to go to, I guess. So. And um, yeah, this this is my, my last slide. Um, really um this one so really this is the ending and uh, in terms of like my plans for after um my bfa uh, i do want to get my mfa i know i talked to uh, several of my professors and they're like you should take time off you know to like work on your craft and get experience you know work in different art spaces so right now i'm like uh, still like figuring out which one i'm going to do first I know definitely for sure I'm taking like all the way up till December, you know, I'm not going to be going into any MFA programs, but I, I definitely do plan on maybe, you know, possibly applying uh, to different schools and things like that. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Asadze. You can, you can uh, stop screen sharing when you, when you feel like it. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, Thank you. It was a great yeah. presentation. Um, I made a few notes. Um, I think you have a really big range of work. Just you dabbled on the like more surreal, like the first works that you show, abstract, like that piece um, that I particularly liked a lot, Lean on Me, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And even portraiture. So it just, mm -hmm. it's clear to me that you like, enjoy different aspects of the of the process and some of the um of the words kind of keywords that came to mind were layers um you keep talking a lot about portals um this navigate navigation of family history of like the past you know and like even your um change from like the bay moving away and how you navigated that to uh, and also talking a lot about contrast. Um, yeah. That's something that kept coming up. Yeah, exactly. um, one of the pieces that I particularly enjoyed, and I love that you shared kind of the process behind them, was excavation. Yeah. I thought that was a really uh, 
interesting uh, process where we could just see what's under one image, all the steps that are kind of hidden. Um, I wonder like, what would that look like as if you just left them as separate pieces uh, with the image in the center, that's you, right? Uh, right. Confronting the different kind of images. Um, I, I thought that that was like uh, a really awesome thing that you shared with us. Um, and again, just another one of my favorites with Lean On Me. I yeah. feel like that piece, um, you mentioned it, it was like quick, not five minutes, but just kind of like a quick exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see more of those. I, I thought the application, the texture, uh, just the color was like excellent too. So congratulations, you really uh, have dabbled around all the different ways of uh, creating an image. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone else wanna chime in here? Osaze, I wanna say something. Oh yeah. <laughs> Great work. I want to really commend you on, I kind of want to um, just acknowledge that this format for you doing a Zoom presentation really served you. And I've seen this happen. I saw this happen when you were in my class last year. Um, there's something that, and it's kind of unexpected. So I just want to kind of bookmark this for you. There's something really powerful when you, uh, there's something sort of um, in your narrative and the way that you present in a Zoom talk that's very, um, like a really up close view of your process that I think that you can kind of like, it, it's, um, remember when that last year when you were talking about sports logos and your work, I just think there's something almost like in this format that you can kind of like mind to, to sort of articulate, be, you know, this is where you're the most articulate about your work. Um, and it's really great to see. So I just want to say congrats and um, it's really good to see, see you here today. So. Thank you. Next is student Wally. So Wally, yeah. Uh, round two. And also, I just want to, uh, if there are any people who want to speak up, um, don't be shy. Uh, can y'all see my slides? <clears throat> we, yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, my name is Wally A. Corona. I'm a painting and drawing major. You notice that the drawing is capitalized and the painting isn't. Um, I decided pretty early on to focus more on drawing than painting. It felt more authentic to what I was trying to achieve. We'll get more to that later. Um, so about me, I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas, where I attended an art-focused nonprofit called SACI from 13 to 18. Uh, at 18, I joined the United States Marine Corps, and I served from 2015 to 2019. Um, Immediately after, I was in Portland going to community college on the GI Bill, and I transferred in the summer of 2020 to CCA, and now I'm here as a senior. I'm an education intern at Root Division. I teach uh, third and fourth grade classes after school. Um, I'm also a fishmonger at Whole Foods, which has a small influence in some of my work, um, and my interests include music like ska, punk, folk, indie rock. Um, and a lot of those like DIY mindsets show up in my work, as well as the DIY mindset of graffiti, uh, which is an interest that I got into at around 13 and kept doing until I was about 18. This is a picture of me at about 17 years old, uh, writing my name on something. And this is me a few years later when I was 20 in Kuwait. That's one of the two murals I painted over that nine month period. Um, and comic books are a huge influence in my work because that's, kind of where I learned how to draw. My dad would sit me down when I was like three years old and we would just copy out of X-Men uh, comic books. Thanks, Dad. Um, art that influences me, uh, earliest on was Barry McGee. This was the first time I saw art that I thought was cool. Like there was nothing that was stuffy about what he was doing. It was just kind of like unleashed expression 
which I thought was awesome. Um, more recently, I met Arlene Valencia Correa through a class here at CCA, and I was just really floored by how rooted her work is in like practical activism. Like these are sweaters that she designed, printed, had all of the proceeds go towards undocumented uh, arm workers. And this was all intended to raise uh, awareness for 2020 census to help count undocumented citizens. Uh, finally, Jeff Rosenstock is a musician that I really uh, admire because one, I love his music, and two, he was part of Bomb the Music Industry, which was a band that was entirely about self-expression and had no merchandise for the first five years. If you wanted a t-shirt from them, you would take your own shirt to their show and they would spray paint a stencil design on it for free, which is something that I think is how most merchandise should be. This is the first shirt they paid to print and it is just a list of times that they considered themselves sellouts, which I think is a mm -hmm. form of honesty that should be more prevalent in the art world. All right, getting into my work, these are some of my, the early pieces that I made when we came back to uh, in-person classes at CCA. Um, the first two are 19th Street here at the top left and uh, Sutter Street at the bottom left. These are done in pencil on Ikea shelves. Um, I liked the way that it was hard to see. Like if you don't have these in the light just right, you won't see any of the detail that's in there. Um, and I thought that the aesthetic fit the sense of uh, dejection, and dissociation, things that I was experiencing a lot of the first couple of years out of the Marine Corps. Um, and then I decided to keep using them because I think the sort of wasted effort, the futileness of this technique is a good analogy for proletariat effort to be seen or heard. Um, so moving forward on the right is a piece called an obelisk. This is how I ended that semester. This is on an Ikea coffee table and the subject is a uh, advertisement from Lyft where they're asking citizens to return their bikes to their dogs for them and then exchange they'll receive credits that are only good on the Lyft app, which I found infuriating because I think it's pretty reminiscent of what you'd find in an old coal town where you'd be given credits that are only good at the company store. And it's sort of this like 21st century iteration of a uh, just sort of, oh man, I'm losing the words here. But I feel like they can just hire someone and pay a living wage to do this instead of trying to suffer us into doing it for chump change. Um, but I was really excited to see the way that it got tagged because I thought that this made for a really succinct visual representation of a conversation between Bay Area citizens and Bay Area tech companies. Um, Moving forward, this is a piece that I kind of consider to be my magnum opus of this uh, series. This is titled Nothing Valuable Left Inside, which is uh, a pretty common note that you'll find, as I'm sure y'all have seen, on uh, cars here in San Francisco, kind of begging to not get broken into. Um, of a car that's been broken into and shoddily repaired. Um, this is its companion piece titled How I'll Make My Millions. This is ballpoint pen on a rock that I found on the street. Uh, these two pieces are intended to be shown facing each other with the rock on the floor about three feet apart. Um, and when I first exhibited this, I had a song called Punk Rock by Mogwai playing uh, because I thought that that captured the sense that I was going for. Um, here are some detailed shots of the larger drawing. This is pencil on black gesso. Uh, I was really proud of this piece. One, because this was such a, oh, such a difficult visual challenge, the duct tape and all the layering. But secondly, this was like my first real attempt at installation driven art, like kind of owning the space with my work. Um, this is my, open studio show where I took a sort of more intentional approach at installation. Um, to make this installation, I used these Lime scooter batteries, like the ones that you rent on your phones right around the street. Um, I found four or five of them over a few months period in my neighborhood just laying around. 
uh, a lot of the on-house population was starting to disengage that lot. So they could use these to either um, hotwire some kind of generator, like I've seen it. There's some real ingenuity happening in the TL. But more commonly, people are using these as just simple tie downs for their tents so they don't blow away in the wind. Um, so after the sweeps, you'd find a bunch of them laying around. I started picking them up and drawing dead fish on them because as a fishmonger, I spend a lot of time staring at dead fish. And I think a lot about the commodification of this carcass and how it goes from being a luxury item to being this putrid, disgusting thing the second you remove the center cut from it. Um, so I liked using that as imagery. Another interesting thing about this project is as I was collecting these scooters, the company started uh, hiring local investigation firms to find out who was stealing their batteries. So I started taking those flyers and manipulating them on flatbed scanners because I thought it was the same sort of uh, conversation that was happening with uh, this piece, a novelist. Um, and I, I got that idea because I saw people actually writing on those flyers, like, how about we find people before we start looking for hunks of plastic? Um, another point is that I had music playing the entire time. Uh, specifically, it was an EP called Dog Whistle by Show Me The Body. They're a hardcore band at New York, and that album is specifically anti-capitalist. Uh, uh, I recommend checking them out. So that's all that I'm showing for the, the works that I have finished. Um, what's next for me is I intend to expand the ways in which I interact with objects. For a while there, I was sort of adamant about being only a drawer, like drawing as the purest form of uh, self-expression. But I decided I am no longer searching for purity in my work. I'm just looking for authenticity because the search for purity became sort of dogmatic and sort of more stifling than, uh, you know, liberating. So. It, in that vein, here on the right is a piece called Fucking Imminence. It's part of a sculptural series that you'll see at my senior show. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm getting more interested in collaboration because as I've searched for purity, I sort of veered away from it. I think I'm missing a really big part of uh, what is important of an art practice. Um, in that light, here on the left is a Moonbather's Tryst, the first of a collaborative drawing series that I'm doing with Nick Hampton, who is awesome. Um, and I'm trying to do more volunteering here in the center are some of the kids that I teach uh, through Root Division. That's, I had just shown them what happens when you put watercolor over a uh, color pencil and they decided it was their mission to cover that wax no matter what it took. Um, and it was just so fun to watch that happen. Um, so I'd like to get more into things like that and I'm searching for residency opportunities for the next couple of years. You can contact me through email or Instagram. I'll probably get back to you faster through Instagram. I'll respond way faster through Venmo though, if you wanna get me on there. Um, that's about it. Oh, I wanted to say thank you to the CCA staff for having such amazing programs all the time. I think it's ridiculous that we're looking at layoffs while our president makes more than any other president of any school in the Bay and more than our mayor. I think that's such a weird thing. And I think y'all deserve more job security. But that's it for my work and my rant. Thank you. Just gonna figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Thank you for sharing. Um, I made some notes while you were presenting. Um, I got, it was very interesting. You talk about um, your focus on drawing and I totally see that. Um, I, I did see a lot of uh, incorporating objects and that was really like something I didn't expect just looking at your um, initial work. So I feel like it, it has been an evolution uh, for you. I think the the things that, you mentioned uh, as your inspirations, like um, that DIY man mindset, kind of like punk values, um, just that like honesty that like, for example, Barry McGee's work has, where it's just like getting something off the ground and you see the value in it and you like turn it into something. Like, I, I think that that's present in your work. Um, I particularly enjoyed the Ikea coffee table uh, piece because 
it is this item that, you know, just living in West Oakland, I just see it discarded. Like it is just like such a um, kind of like um, piece that I just see discarded in this way that's like almost no value. And you turn it into this like almost ad was very, uh, very intriguing. The um, other piece that I thought was very, very uh, successful was the nothing valuable inside next to the rock. I thought that was genius. Um, a few days ago, I just saw this kid while I was parking, parked on my car. This kid came um, in front of me and was about to steal or about to like smash the uh, windows of the cart right in front of me. And it just like, it's such like a Bay Area moment right now, unfortunately, but it speaks of a larger conversation of um, people not getting their needs met, of course. Um, so throughout your work, I think that there's this like, dark sense of humor, um, but it's not just to be kind of like funny. It has some, uh, it's rooted in like deep kind of social commentary of what is going on around you. Um, I, I thought that was very successful. Um, and just as a last uh, comment, I think um, maybe you would like to see the work of uh, this artist, Miguel Calderon, because he truly, I think embodies this like, dark sense of humor that I feel like would be interesting for you to look at. Um, for example, he has this piece where he's critiquing the art world and he made this fridge that has a bunch of sh old shoes with cheese inside and it's like rotting. Um, but it's like a little fridge, kind of like where you put like sodas. And um, yeah, like that's kind of like the social commentary that he wants to do. And I think it's successful. Your work reminded me a lot of what he explores and um yeah i just like really enjoy that body of work i think it's um yeah it was my favorite from their presentation can you put the name of that artist in the chat so i can take a note yeah let me do it right now thank you okay Linda, you are mute. I just said, let's hear from some students who want to speak up or faculty um, comments. Um, congratulations to, to all of you who went. Um, these were all really great. And I want to thank all of you. I like to say something. Go for it. Uh, David Huffman here. Uh, drawing and painting faculty. I just want to say it's been an honor working with Yaskin, Rose, Osazi, and Wally. You guys were fantastic. I've watched you guys go from very awkward beginnings to very competent, reflective, decisive ways of making work. And just like Liz Hernandez, which you did a fantastic job, Liz. Uh, can we give Liz a hand? Because that was fantastic. You did a great job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You guys were just, you guys are jamming. You have what it takes to leave the school and to make a life with art if you choose to do so. And um, I had, there's quite a few surprises in your presentations. I keep forgetting, Wally, that you were in the Marines and it's almost like you were a communist in the Marines. <laughs> I know you weren't, but um, I love how you don't become dogmatic or, you know, kind of like, overcome by other forces. You seem to have an inner barometer that keeps you looking at what is the truth and what is honesty. And I think that's always going to help you. Um, I can say a little bit about everybody, you know, for sure. Every You guys know how much I care about you and how much I've tried to have in-depth conversations about what was important for you as an artist. And, you know, today you guys proved that. And I'm looking forward to seeing so much more from you in the future. Thanks so much. Any other comments? I'd like to say congratulations to everyone as well. Um, echoing David, it's one of the biggest privileges of being in this job is to work with folks at the bottom, like the beginning levels and at the advanced levels. Mm -hmm. And so I feel other than Asaze, which I'm sad we didn't get to work together, that's been so rewarding to see the growth of 
all of you all. And um, yeah, and I think just this, I'm so, this format is so great. Um, such a great sort of exit activity along with the um, shows. So I'm just excited we're continuing these. Uh, so congratulations, everyone. So thank you all. If James want to say something. <laughs> thank you and congratulations to all of you. I kind of want to just reiterate what my colleagues have said and um, congratulations and please keep making work. Thank you all for participating in our 2023 thesis conversation today. Thank you so much, Liz, for your wonderful comments. Um, thank you. Our students' works. Um, and it, it, can I, I, wait, let me, I'm yeah. gonna interrupt you, Norgas. Yeah, sure. Alicia, do you, Alicia, do you wanna speak up? You wanna say anything? Um, <laughs> I mean, to my student, to not my students, sorry, to the minus Oz who I, I looked at your work. Um, I mean, the one thing I will say is being the one who is kind of the, the greenest of all of you, maybe minus Liz to the work. Um, and not having interacted with students since the pandemic. Um, and this speaks to every single person in my senior projects class. And I might get emotional, but uh, I, I've never actually seen a, a group of students like this. And I think part of it is those that stuck through the pandemic found a way to survive and, and use their art in a way that helped in that survival. Um, and there's something that, that, that has come out of that that is truly unique and only a once in a generation and all the years I've taught I've really never seen such focused articulate students and I'm just like deeply moved and uh honored just to be a part of the situation so thank you guys thank you Alicia and Keith do you want to chime in since you're right there <laughs> Yeah, put me on the spot. It was so exciting to see you guys use words as things and testify because the word is the thing too. So it was really pleasurable to hear you tell your stories. Uh, I'm excited to think about the future and how you will look back on this moment and collectively bring together all those things that love you, you know? Uh, and you know, when you walk through the door, come back to the door, we're still here. You know, we are a family and a, and a community. Sometimes if you need, need a, a vocal jam session, come, come in our classes, sit down, let's have a conversation. You know, it's not that deep. Don't send no 15 emails, say you've seen you coming. Just kind of come, sit down and let's chill and let's, and let's talk. Uh, the relationship doesn't stop here, but I'm so very proud to kind of walk by your studios and keep in them a little bit. And they feel very much alive uh, as you do. So I give thanks for witnessing the moment of, you know, fellow artists growing and expanding. Is there anything on your hearts you want to say? Mm. Thanks, Keith. <clears throat> Thank you, Keith. Let's have a clap for our Thank you. students. Congratulations to all of our students and best wishes for your future adventure. Thank you for participating and have a great day. Thank you, Nargis. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Bye. Everyone. Thank you, Bye.